How you doing? In this video, we're going to cover proper fitment of your piston and the things you run into. And that's just, there's some pretty important stuff here. It's not always right up front noticeable. And your ring and gap and the best way to handle that, okay? A lot of times, slow and steady is what wins the race. You don't get any yank because you're doing some pretty crazy stuff that's very common. I'm going to show you a simple method to do a lot of this where there is way more complicated. I'm going to show you what I look for to have proper fitment, proper ring and gap. Uh, this stuff ends up being quite important. On your ring and gap, this happens to be a caber ring. They're, they're a very nice ring. You want to check your ring gap, and this tells you where your bore is, right at the base, down inside the cylinder, down in the center. A lot of times I'll check just above the transfers and then just above the exhaust, and I'll tell you why. When items are cast and then they're plated and then they're machined, um, during a fast-paced manufacturing process, at, after they're cast, they're bored, and then they're precision honed. We know this. Then they're plated, precision honed again. Everything happens too fast. So that any place where the um, castings are on the transfers and exhaust, as it cools, just kind of move just that tiny bit, it won't take as much material uh, in that spot during either process because it's not slow and you know and and ensure the perfection you'll see it in oem cylinders that are brand new you'll see it in aftermarket get used to it what do we do about this okay i'm going to show you in this cylinder this is 4372 it is a big board it's 52 millimeter but uh, I'll give you the general rundown on this. Let me move this camera. Now, a lot of times in the piston, as a cast piston, you don't see it in the Ford so much. But in this area right here, you'll, you'll feel that when you drop that down in there. This will become a little tight down through the transfers and the exhaust. Take your verniers. Take a measurement approximately right here. Take one up here. Take one right here and just see where that you'll notice sometimes two, three thousandths difference right here on the edge of this crown. The first thing I do before I even check the fit in the cylinder, take me a little 600 and I just go around. I already done this one, so I'm not going to do it. I'll go around that kind of like that with the pressure of my fingers right in these areas. This is a great time to be on what's at uh, shooting a bowl or talk to anybody on the phone, or just be relaxed. You're not in a hurry. Take the time to get these measurements correct, okay? Um, that's best done after heat treat, but it's not necessary because the heat treat process isn't at a high enough temperature to actually distort anything as a, as a rule. Uh, and these highway pistons heat treat wonderfully, actually. And uh, so... Let's assume that this was perfect right out of the box, which it was not. I did have to remove material. It's not that hard to do. Okay. Now, the next thing I did was took this little bugger here. I put my ring in. And I checked my gap in them three places. And I noticed a difference. Well, you take your little ball home. This happens to be a 400 grip. 600 is a little easier, but I like 400 quite well and just use some type of a lubricant it doesn't matter what it is really not a heavy oil something light uh low pb blaster don't use carb cleaner or anything that don't work and hone that cylinder now when you're honing what you want to do is go in and out at about this speed here just like that that'll get a perfect cross hatch you when you pull your cylinder out this one's done you can see the cross hatch Okay, it's just just nice crosses. Um, something will happen to you. Cross hatch is there to seal the ring. Okay, you'll start honing, 
you clean it up. And when I say clean, I mean take this in the house. Or if you are lucky enough to have a sink in your shop, which I don't. Take some Tide soap and some rags and wash. And I mean wash. This is a process get used to repeating many times. The first time you hone that, all of a sudden you'll notice that your piston may not slide down good. You have to really wash your piston good too at the same time. Every time. Don't cheat on this process. Do it, do it slow and take your time for good results. You'll say, well, dang, a piston feels a little tighter than dead. That's because that crosshatch, there, it's little micro burrs that you're rolling up, okay? There's two things you can do. If you're close to tolerance, you can knock them burrs down with your 600. You can just go in there with your hand and roll that around, knock them burrs down, wash it good with good soap and water many times, make sure it's absolutely clean. It's got to pass the drop test, okay? Don't even bother doing anything about your ring gap until you got your cylinder and piston fitment. Okay, it can't slow up anywhere. It's got to drop smoothly, you know, and uh, just like that. Absolutely smooth. You'll notice when you bring your cylinder up, you'll get just a little bit of a rock right there. Okay, it'd be just, it won't feel like much, okay? But now I'm going to show you a way to check your uh, tolerance. This is not the best way, but it's something everybody has as feeler gauges. Like I said, this is not the best way. Dial bore gauges are the very best way. You just in there, spin them, and then use your mics or your verniers if you've got accurate ones, and measure, and measure them in several spots, and you'll get what your average is. Consider two things if you're using dial bore gauges and you're really trying to work that cylinder out. What's the loosest and what's the tightest and what am I going to do about it? Sometimes you're going to go in there with some 180 and kind of scrub a spot around the transfers and exhaust to remove just a little bit of plating. You're not taking much. You're really not. Um, but make sure your piston is the same everywhere first with the verniers. Or your mics, okay? That's the first thing you're going to do, okay? Like I said, this is not highly recommended, but if you ain't got a clue and you don't have anything to measure and you're not going to go out and spend 50 bucks on a fairly generic set of feeler gauges, this is what you can do. See where that ring is? Okay, I want that just slightly past that. That'll give me a measurement with a feeler gauge. So what I do is I lay the feeler gauge down into the cylinder slightly. Don't force this piston. Just let it just kind of drift in there. Right there. Just like that. That's your tolerance. Okay. And not, I wedged it in there. Isn't that funny? Oh, isn't that hilarious? Okay, it cocked just slightly on me. Anyway, you get the idea. You might be a thousandths off on it doing this. That is six thousandths on the gauge. Right. I think you can read it, maybe. Okay, guess what that means? I have three thousandths on a side. Okay, I like three to four. Two and a half is fine, you know, so that would be five. If you slide a 4,000 feeler gauge in there and it's as tight as this one was, it, you know, like I said, it, it should slide together. But like I said, this is not the most accurate. You, it will be off just a tiny bit. Okay, so I have my clearance where the, uh, if that piston heats up faster than cylinder initially, it probably isn't going to grow enough to uh, cold seize that piston. That's what it actually is. When you warm your saw up properly, the piston gets warm first, then the cylinder does, and it will expand slightly. And your tolerances will come in and be really, really awesome. They'll be, they'll be perfect. Okay, now knowing this, 
ring gap. When you check your ring gap, just slide it in, get it just nicely started, take your piston, get it about to the center of the first ring. This is only a one ring. And that'll guarantee that that isn't in there cock wobbled. And check your ring gap. Okay, I'm going to check with a six thousandths first. Okay. You'll have to wiggle that around, and you'll feel it just slide with the resistance, okay? Six thousandths goes. You're starting to see a correlation between bore, how much it's going to change when it heats up, and how much... Uh, it's going to be on a side. Trying to find a... I know I got a 7 here. 3, 4. Uh, okay, got to close it. Reopen it. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The next one should be... Okay, this one just goes three, four, five, six, and then it goes to eight. I would like to see seven thousandths. Eight does not quite go. Five and six go. Five goes, six goes in. Just just nicely, okay? And there's a little play there. There's a little play. I can feel it. It's nicer to have a set that has seven. But I can tell it's not eight, but it's more than six. So we got seven thousandths. In a 50 to 52 millimeter bore, I like seven thousandths. I'll take nine. That That's fine. As your bore size decreases, you might want to take a thousandths off. When you get uh, 54 to 56 millimeter, you might want them at 9, okay, instead of 7. See, see how this works? 70 cc saw is 7. 90 cc is 9. 50 cc is 5. In chainsaws, this is the way it'll be. And get used to doing that. And then what you do is push this down. Until it's past the transfers, which is right there. Okay, just nicely at the top of the transfers. And see if you have the same clearance. If you don't, you have to do something about it. Beautiful. That's just perfect. I can tell, I'm, I, I'm a machinist by trade amongst all kinds of things I can do, that that is going to be the right one. But, go ahead and try with your 8. 8 doesn't quite go, so I'm at 7 thousandths. Now, go above ex a roof of your exhaust, do the same thing, okay? That... Where it really counts is above the roof of your exhaust from there up through to see how, how nice that is. Uh, but that's your tolerances. That's how you get there. And that's the tools you can use. Like I said, dial bore gauges uh, are the most accurate. If you're planning on doing a lot of saws, buy dial bore gauges. If you don't have, be careful with these. Uh, make sure you know what that tolerance is. You can just keep honing that nickel cell. Do not do this on a chrome cylinder. Do not. Uh, you're better off uh, chucking your piston in a lathe and and polishing it off the piston if you have a chrome bore. Okay? This is what you're better off doing. 
Um, I hope this kind of information is really helping you. It helped me greatly. It, uh, this is something I've done for at least 40 years, at least. Now, I'm not making these videos to make fun of anybody that's a YouTuber or is not, not a YouTuber. Or to say they're doing it wrong and I'm the only one that does it right. Because that's not the way Saw World is. Trust me. Uh, you take 10 saws to 10 different builders. And you're going to get 10 different results. You can take 10 saws and bring them to me. Let them build them back to back. You may see... A mild difference from one to the other just because that's the way motors do. Plain and simple. I'm here to teach the world. If you are a porter and want to know any little subtle tricks that you think maybe I'm not covering or I need to cover better, leave it in the comments. Email me. Um, I'll talk to anybody. I don't care. I don't have an opinion. I'm just too old for all that. If I was 30, I'd probably keep a whole lot of things to myself, guys. But when I was 30, I didn't know what I know now. But I was pretty good. But sometimes we have to learn what not to do, don't we? Okay, so we've covered the piston, the ring, the fitment, the wrist pin fitment. That's the basis for your saw before you even start fit up porting. This is the important stuff to make sure that everything is going together properly beforehand. You're not going to have trouble. These numbers will keep you out of trouble, guaranteed. No, I'm going to see so many comments. Oh, I don't use 7,000. I use 12. Use 12 then. Do that. I build logging saws, okay? They have to run a long time. I don't want to take and gap rings in logging saws. So read between the lines, folks. Don't want to gap them rings to their outside limit of wear. No, because that ring won't last years like it should in a proper logging saw. Okay, that's it. Goodbye.